YouTube channel subscribers to Big Bill Anderson's Death Tours. It's August 5th, Monday, 2019. I am back in Tombstone again for a few videos that I'm doing. I just love this town. I've been here probably 15, 20 times through the years. Uh, it's about a little less uh, than three hour drive from Phoenix where I live to get here. And uh, for this video that I'm doing right now, I am paying respects to Marshal Fred White, who was killed in the line of duty right here. The Birdcage Theater was built in 1881, and Fred White was killed in, on October 28th, 1880, right here around this spot here. And there is actually a plaque here signifying Fred White's murder right there and what I'm going to do is uh, take you to Boot Hill Cemetery where Marshal Fred White has been laid to rest he was killed in the line of duty, and what I found amazing, I have been to his grave many times, is law enforcement officers that visit his grave leave money on his grave site. And the last time I was there, unless they removed it, there was probably about $40, $50 worth of quarters and dimes there at his grave site as a payment of respect from law enforcement, men and women around the country perhaps around the world, for Fred White. So I'll take you to his grave right now, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about his life. But at first, I wanted to show you the approximate spot of where he died. This building, like I said, was not here. It was an open lot here at the end of the street here, downtown Tombstone, right through there. So Marshall White was killed by Curly Bill Brocious right here. If you saw the movie... Tombstone, the 1993 movie where Powers Booth kills Harry Carey Jr. Uh, Powers portraying Curly Bill Brocious and Harry Carey Jr. portraying Fred White, Marshal Fred White. It, the uh, incident happened by accident, very similar to what was uh, shown in the movie. The only difference is in my research, I found out that Marshal Fred White, who has always been depicted as an elderly man, was only about 31 years old. So I'll take you to his grave now, and we'll talk a little bit more about the life of Marshal Fred White and how he died and what led up to his killing. And uh, stay with me, my friends. Thank you. All right, my friends, I'm at Boot Hill Cemetery in Tombstone, August 5th, 2019. It is a rainy Monday rain is off and on here and there it was coming down now it stopped so I'm here at Marshal Fred White's final resting place he was killed by Curly Bill Brocious as I've told you in this uh, video here and I'm uh, gonna tell you a little bit more about Marshal White his life as much as people know about it there's only I believe one or two photos ever taken of him. And uh, I will show you those photos. He was only 31 years old when he passed. Stay with me, my friends. Frederick G. White was born in New York City in 1849. He was the first town marshal of the mining boomtown of Tombstone in the Arizona Territory. White was elected to the position on January 6th 1880. At the time, Tombstone was still an emerging frontier town with fewer than a thousand residents and did not become an official city until a year later. White was regarded as removed from the complex business, personal, and political rivalries that involved many of Tombstone's residents at the time. Unlike other city employees, including Wyatt Earp and his siblings, who owned and partly owned many of the town's businesses and tried to steer its populace and visitors towards those 
under their ownership. White had no personal stake in any such enterprise, settling instead for his regular salary as a town marshal. He was respected by the town in general and by all accounts treated everyone fairly. In the months before his killing, White formed an alliance and friendship with Wyatt Earp, then deputy undersheriff for the southern portion of Pima County, which included Tombstone. White had established himself as a likable and professional lawman, and contrary to later depictions in film, was well respected by the area's less reputable elements, including the cowboys. He often arrested individual cowboys, but rarely had any problems. On the rare occasion that one resisted arrest, he used force as needed and seemingly had the support of the other cowboys in doing so. White got along particularly well with Curly Bill Brocious, and Brocious often joked with him. On the night of October 28, 1880, several cowboys entered town and began drinking, with some of them firing their pistols in the air at different locations. Marshal White proceeded to confront each of them and disarm them. All of them confronted by him gave up their weapons voluntarily, without incident. Late that night, White encountered Curly Bill Brocious at the east end of town on a dark street in a vacant lot where the Birdcage Theater now stands. Brocious was intoxicated, and he or his companions were firing pistols in the air. White instructed Brocious to surrender his pistol. Brocious did this by pulling the weapon out of his pocket, handing it barrel first to White. If you've seen the 1993 movie Tombstone, that is an accurate portrayal of the shooting. Wyatt Earp later claimed that he thought the pistol's hammer was half cocked over a live round. It was later found to have contained six live rounds. When White grabbed the barrel and pulled the weapon, it discharged shooting White in the groin area, which differed from the Tombstone movie where he was shot in the chest. Wyatt Earp, who witnessed the shooting and Flash, but could not clearly see the action in the dark, pistol-whipped Brocious, knocking him unconscious, and arrested him. Wyatt told his biographer many years later that he thought Brocious was still armed at the time and did not notice that Brocious' pistol lay on the ground in the dark until Brocious was already down. Brocious was arrested by Wyatt Earp and his brother Morgan, both of whom were working as Pima County Sheriff deputies at the time. Brocious was said to have terribly regretted the shooting of White, whom Brocious liked and maintained that it was an accident. The next day, Wyatt Earp and another deputy took Curly Bill to the county jail in the county seat of Tucson, possibly saving him from being lynched when White later died at the time. Tombstone had a one-room wooden jail very near the scene of the shooting, which was famous for its flimsiness. White lingered for two days, dying on October 30th, 1880. However, prior to his death, he gave testimony that ultimately led to Brocious being cleared of any wrongdoing. White stated that the pistol fired accidentally and that Brocious, intoxicated, evidently did not realize the pistol was cocked. It was due to White's testimony as well as the demonstration for the court that Curly Bill's pistol could be fired from a half-cocked position that Judge Nugas in Tucson dismissed the charge against Curly Bill Brocious. Despite his regret over the shooting death of White and his assistance from Earp in being taken out of town, Earp also ended up testifying on his behalf. Brocious resented having been pistol whipped by Earp during his arrest. This was one factor that led to increasing tensions between the Earps and the Cowboys. After the gunfight at the O.K. Corral a year later and the murder of Morgan Earp in March of 1882, Wyatt Earp pursued and killed Brocious in a gunfight in the, in the countryside outside Tombstone. 
Although White is portrayed in the 1993 film Tombstone by Harry Carey Jr. as an elderly or older man, he was actually only 31 years old at the time of his death. He was also played by Boots Sutherland in the 1994 film Wyatt Earp. Marshal Fred White is buried here at Boot Hill Cemetery in Tombstone. My friends, I hope you have liked this video. I felt the need to pay my respects to this law enforcement official who was killed in the line of duty doing the job that he loved but it is comforting to know that he is still so respected by law enforcement that come and pay their respects here to his grave as you can see the money that they leave for him as a sign of respect so rest in peace Marshal Fred White and my friends, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to watch this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not done so already. I have a lot more videos coming your way from different topics of gangsters to the Old West, to celebrity graves, to celebrity houses, to historic locations. So stay with me, my friends, as you delve into the, the world of Big Bill Anderson's death tours. Adios, amigos. Thank you.